Hey, doing guys? It's Mark from Cars and Cameras, and today I'm going to talk about a product that's been on the market for a little while now, but I wanted to talk about it because there's been some great improvements in this product, and now I'm ready to review it. And um, it's been improved greatly with software updates for the firmware, and also they've given you, um, there's been some hardware improvements, and we're going to talk about that right now. So, here it is. Here's the DJI Osmo, and uh, you know there's plenty of YouTube videos going over the the usage of it, and you know I will include my own uh, videos to show you uh, uh, actual use. But what I want to do is talk about the product a little bit, and talk about you know some of the limitations of it, and also talk about some of the improvements. So let's get right to it. So the first thing is that um, as of this video, they've made uh, tremendous improvements in the uh, firmware, and um, Mainly, uh, the biggest complaints with the device were the uh, recording, the you know the the onboard audio was horrible, and they fixed that in uh, with a hardware solution and also a software solution. They now include this um, ten dollar microphone. You can buy it, you know, if you already have the unit, you can buy this uh, for ten dollars, and so uh, it just plugs in right here now. You know, you, you have a sound solution without going out and, you know, buying another 50, 60, 70, 100 dollar microphone to put on here. So, because there's a lot of solutions for that. Um, another thing that they've done is now when you, um, only when the device is in standby mode, there's a fan on it, and that's on the back here. And we're going to show that here. So on the back of the device, see right there, there's a fan, and that fan is working when the device is in standby mode. And, um, and it's loud. You know, it's loud. And before, when you hit record, you know, it was it was still going, you know, to, to basically keep the, uh, the, 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 you know, the camera cool, the 4K camera cool. And um, so now what happens is it shuts off when you're recording. And uh, that's the default setting. So now, you know, your videos are pretty silent. Um, there is a, obviously a little bit of motor noise, a little bit of noise, you know, off of these uh, stabilizers. Um, but, you know, that's to be expected, but it's not bad now because the microphone kind of sits, you know, in front of the camera. So this, this solution, like I said, works pretty good. Okay, so let's take a some, look at some video and see what we can do. Now, I got to say that the stabilizer is very manageable. A couple of things that I don't like is you're going to see me kind of panning to the right here as we're going down the street. And, um, you know, I'm moving the whole gimbal unit. I mean, I'm basically moving my hand to the right right here. And uh, I don't like using the uh, thumb wheel control too much. I think the thumb wheel control makes the movements a little too jerky. And uh, we'll look at some of those a little bit later. But, um, you know, if you just do very fluid movements with it, um, you get much better results. And, uh, you know, you can see here, you know, using it that way is, I really think that's the best way to use it. Um, a couple more things I'm going to talk about coming up is uh, exposure and, uh, you know, using it like that because there's people are not really explaining this carefully because really to get this kind of cinematic footage, you know, you got to add a couple of things to the unit. And uh, I'm going to go over those things right now because you're not going to get that out of the box. You're going to need to add a couple of things to the unit to get this uh, kind of cinematic footage that I have here. You see the lens here on the camera? Well, the lens is a 20 millimeter equivalent, so it's a very wide field of view, but you see there how it says f2.8? Well, that's all this lens is. It's basically, if you know anything about photography, the lens is wide open all the time, okay? And um, that's a good and a bad thing, because I guess on a small sensor like this, you know, that's fine, but... The problem is with the lens wide open is, you know, I like to shoot everything, you know, 24p, 4k, but even if you're shooting 24p, 1080p, which this camera has the ability to do, um, you know, if you have the lens wide open and you go outside and it's a nice sunny, bright day, even if it's an overcast day, well, you're going to be shooting at like 1 500th of a second or higher. And basically you're going to get this very kind of choppy kind of saving private Ryan uh, look and you know you're not going to be following you know the 148 uh, 180 degree shutter rule so because you can't because basically uh, you will have no image so to to combat that uh, DJI does will happily sell you these uh, ND filters and this is a three-stop ND filter and basically it just kind of attaches to the to the front of the uh, the lens or just screws on 
Okay, so here's some footage with the ND8 filter installed. Uh, this is the same filter that I had installed on the other footage that I just uh, reviewed. And, uh, you know, you can see in the shady situations, uh, one thing that I wanted to talk about quickly is you do lose contrast when you install an ND filter, but, you know, the plus side is that, you know, you get your smooth cinematic footage and, and you just won't get these kind of results if you don't use uh, ND filter, especially in, uh, in full sunlight. And... Um, so, you know, it, uh, it works really well. And, you know, as long as you're using those filters and, you know, you have your settings done correctly, you can get great results with this camera. Now, the next thing I wanted to talk about is I got uh, access to the, uh, the Z-axis stabilizer arm. And I'm just going to show you that kind of quickly here. Now, here, this footage is with the Z-axis stabilizer arm. And uh, it works really well. What I don't like about it is it does drift a little bit. And as I was talking earlier in the video, um, I did have to use the thumb wheel to control the movement so it didn't drift. You know, see there, it was starting to drift, and you know, I you know went ahead and you know and moved, you know, pan to the right, you know, with the with, the, and there I'm panning a little bit to the left. So it gives you more of a little bit more of a mechanical feel. Some people don't mind it. Uh, I'm not a fan of it, but uh, there's some footage with that. Uh, the camera works fine without it. Um, again, guys, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, be sure to subscribe. I'll have a lot more videos on new cameras and other interesting products coming very soon. Thank you very much and have a great day.